Hi guys, I'm Diz and you're watching the SQV Battle channel. In this video, we are going to compare a few interesting pickup trucks including Ford Raptor, a few Toyota Hilux, Nissan Navara, Ford Ranger, Volkswagen Amarok and Isuzu D-Max. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do because in the near future, I'm going to upload another SUV pickups battle, including Toyota Tundra with compressor, Nissan Titan, two types of Toyota Tacoma, Mitsubishi L200, Chinese pickup JAC T6, and two types of Volkswagen Amarok. Stay tuned. Let's get back to our participants. Today, they're going to attempt to go over two obstacles, diagonal test drive, and a familiar long ascent hill, which some of you might have seen in my previous videos with premium SUV battle and some other videos with participants such as Tesla Model X, Mercedes G63, and Toyota FJ Cruiser. You can find links to these videos in the description. By the way, before we start, I'd like to note that four of today's video participants have the same tires. BF Goodrich AT, Isuzu and Volkswagen have Bridgestone Dueler HT, I hope that in the future videos, I will be able to gather some cars with the same tires in order to get perfect comparison. So make yourself comfortable and let's start. 2008 turbo diesel Nissan Navara goes first. It has rear and inter axle lock as well as low gear setting. Car suspensions rate isn't high enough for wheels to get a good grip and continue to move forward wheels keep helplessly spinning in the air. Once the rear axle lock was activated, the car was able to overcome this obstacle. However, we have a big rocky step ahead that will remind us of its presence. Now the car is going to diagonally drive off the uphill. Locked rear axle helped Nissan confidently overcome the final part of the obstacle. Without rear axle lock, it would be way more difficult and now you will see for yourself. Next, we have 2012 Ford Ranger with a 3.2 liter turbo diesel V6 engine. It has low gear and inter axle lock. Despite the revised suspension and bigger wheels, the car suspension travel length simply isn't enough to get a good traction. Therefore, hung wheels helplessly slip. Unlike Nissan Navara, Ford Ranger doesn't have a rear axle lock. Thus, the car gains some momentum and overcomes this obstacle with some speed. However, now we need to drive off diagonally and uphill. Remember how easy it was for Navara? All because of the rear axle lock. And since the Ranger doesn't have it, we get the corresponding result. Only after gaining some speed and active wheel slipping, the car was able to overcome this obstacle. Next participant is the 2018 Isuzu D-Max with a 2.5 liter turbo diesel engine. Some of the off-road attributes this car has include part-time all-wheel drive, low gear selector, and traction control system. Nissan and Ford helplessly slipped at this part. However, Isuzu's traction control system lets the car overcome the first part of the obstacle easily. Adding more throttle supplied more torque to the wheels, and the car was able to pass this barrier. The long rear overhang has left its mark on the ground with its signature sound. D-Max has no problem getting out of there. A little more throttle gives more torque to the loaded wheels and the car successfully leaves the obstacle course. Now, let's move on to the next participant. The 2019 Volkswagen Amarok with a 3-liter turbo diesel engine. Its all-wheel drive system, equipped with a torsion differential and rear interaxle lock, as well as effective traction control system. The car was able to overcome this obstacle with the rear differential lock. However, it seems to me Amarok could pass this section with only traction control system. As you can see, no issues driving out of there. 
Amarok easily and naturally overcomes this obstacle. The next participant is the 2012 Toyota Hilux in standard trim, which doesn't have rear interaxle lock and traction system. Of the off-road attributes, it has low gear transmission, which means there will be lots of dust and rocks flying out from under the wheels. Toyota Hilux was desperate to drive out of the first part of the obstacle, including that big rocky step I mentioned earlier. Thus, it gained some momentum and drove off. It would be strange if Hilux could drive out of the diagonal obstacles. That's why it had to gain more momentum Moreover, it was necessary to gain such acceleration so that the car could overcome that hill, but also turn at the exit. Next, we have the 2018 Toyota Hilux tuned by Arctic Truck. Under the hood, it has a 2.8 liter turbo diesel engine as well as rear axle lock. Its suspension travel length allows it to easily pass the first part. However, we've got a problem while driving out in normal all-wheel drive. Unloaded wheels are actively slipping, raising a huge cloud of dust. It is worth noting, this was the dustiest trip I have ever organized. Dust was everywhere, our clothes, cameras, and even on our teeth. Only once the rear axle lock was activated, Hilux was able to overcome this obstacle. Now we have the Ford F-150 with a mighty 5-liter V8 engine under the hood. As a result of improvements, the car increased its ground clearance and has all three locks. Front differential lock, central interaxle lock, and rear differential lock. The long base has allowed the car to pass the first diagonal test. Keep in mind, the car drives in the standard four-wheel drive mode. Overcoming a rocky step couldn't have been done without activating rear lock. Otherwise, the car's suspended wheels were actively slipping. It seems to me that due to the long base and car suspension travel, Ford would be able to drive without activating the rear lock. F-150 drives out of this obstacle the same way as Navara, Amarok, and the Blue Hilux, which all had activated rear axle lock. Moving on to the next participant, we have the 2012 Hilux with eye-catching looks and rear axle lock. This pickup is no exception. The suspended wheels do not have enough grip and helplessly spin in a simple four-wheel drive mode. First section was passed only by activating the rear axle lock. A rocky step could become a serious obstacle if you just slightly change the trajectory. Even with the activated rear lock, it is not easy for Hilux. Before overcoming the final diagonal test, we disengaged the rear lock in hopes that the suspension travel and the size of the wheels will be enough to drive off in the usual all-wheel drive mode. No miracle happens. Without a rear lock, even a modified Hilux is powerless in front of this obstacle. There's not much to comment on 29 Ford Raptor. This car just keeps driving. It has such a gigantic suspension travel that the wheels never lose grip. Even when driving off from the obstacle, Raptor just continues to drive on four wheels, whereas all the participants had the front left wheel off the ground. Now, moving on to the next obstacle. Long ascent hill with a good slope and series of diagonal tests. 
Regular viewers of my channel have already seen a comparison of popular premium all-wheel drive crossovers on this same hill. The link to this video is on the top right corner. You can also find it in the description. Nissan Navara is the first to go. Navara drives with a locked rear differential. Although it would be logical to start in the normal all-wheel drive mode, perhaps the suspension travel would be enough for the car to cope with this obstacle. Unfortunately, I discovered this fact only during the editing of this video. From the outside, it seems as if this is a simple obstacle, isn't it? But this is all because of the rear lock. We have a gray Hilux without any differential locks among our participants today. It will be a good example, which will be relevant for Navara in simple all-wheel drive mode, which is without activating the rear lock. In the meantime, we have our next participant, Ford Ranger. The very first diagonal test made Ford stop. The car backs up and in the second attempt, passes a little to the right while gaining a little bit of speed. Further, according to the scenario, car stops in the middle of the hill so that it starts in the more complicated circumstances. Another diagonal test, but unfortunately Ford couldn't pass it without locking the interaxle. The car rolls back and overcomes this obstacle with more speed. Next participant. Remember how Ford was helplessly stuck in the same place? D-Max's traction control works amazing. The main thing is to press the gas pedal harder and leave the rest of the electronics. This is especially clearly seen on the second part of the obstacle, where the slippage of the unloaded wheels is minimal and the car moves forward confidently. Now, let's see how Amarok handles this, which has an equally cool traction control system. Note that the Amarok is the last to pass this obstacle, which means that he got all the holes dug by the previous participants. Four-wheel drive in automatic mode, the car is actively skidding on diagonal test. However, still manages to move forward. And now, gray Hilux with no differential locks and no traction control system. Presumably, Nissan Navara in normal all-wheel drive mode will show about the same result. As expected, the very first diagonal test became a stumbling block for this car. As a result, the car takes to the right and goes around the first part of the obstacle. The second diagonal obstacle, where Navara easily passed with the rear axle lock, Toyota just cannot. As a result, the car rolls back and overcomes this obstacle by accelerating as much as it can. Next participant is aesthetic truck tuned Toyota Hilux. The car drives in the usual all-wheel drive mode. This tricky diagonal test doesn't care if the car has huge suspension travel and special tires. Simple all-wheel drive is useless here. Therefore, Hilux activates the rear axle lock. With the rear axle lock activated, the situation changes dramatically. The car easily overcame the first diagonal obstacle. Before overcoming the second part of the obstacle, we disengage rear axle lock in hopes for the length of suspension travel. But this ascent has its own plans in this regard. Hilux helplessly slips. And as soon as the rear axle lock was activated, the car immediately drove forward as if there was no obstacles. Ford F-150 goes next. All-wheel drive in standard mode, and the first diagonal test became a problem. Once rear axle lock was activated, Ford confidently passed the first part of the obstacle. Planned stop, 
Rear axle lock disengaged and the car continues to drive. But without lock differential, even the modified Ford on special tires becomes just a big crossover, which helplessly skids with its suspended wheels. Once rear axle lock is activated, Ford confidently leaves the obstacle course. Next participant. Hilux with a modified suspension and large wheels. Four wheel drive in standard mode. And we see the same story that was with the blue Hilux. Alas, there is no way without locking the rear axle. Driving on three wheels after turning on the rear lock is a direct special feature of Toyota pickups. Next, we stop in the middle of the distance, disengage the axle lock, and see what happens next. Longer suspension travel in large wheels made it possible to overcome the second part of the obstacle without rear lock. But it seems to me that this has not been done without a decrease in tire pressure. Although, all of the other participants were driving at standard pressure. And for dessert, an exemplary demonstration performance by Ford Raptor. The car drove the entire distance calmly, steadily, and with confidence. In this place, the suspension travel is clearly visible. It is not surprising that the car always has traction, so any surface irregularities are easily vincible. Finishing with this obstacle, I will show you how Volkswagen Amarok passes this section with activated rear lock. The result is almost similar to a Ford Raptor, even while remaining on three wheels because in addition to rear axle lock like Hilux has, there is also an effective traction control system which certainly raises the bar for Amarok's capabilities in contrast to competitors. I will not go into technical details, but I will state the facts with real examples that you just watched. The first type, simple all-wheel drive without any limitations and locks. Ford Ranger and gray Toyota Hilux had it. It's peculiarity, and we can say the main drawback is that the torque is transmitted to the wheels with the least resistance, or in simple terms, to the wheel that has the worst grip on the road slash ground. In case of overcoming the diagonal obstacle, these would be the two unloaded wheels, sometimes even hanging in the air, which are located diagonally. With such an all-wheel drive system, it is impossible to drive up and down diagonally. Second type, exactly the same as in the first case, but with the addition of a force rear axle differential lock. When activated, both rear wheels receive the same amount of torque. In a difficult situation, the torque is transmitted to three wheels. One wheel on the front axle, the one with the least resistance, and two rear ones, one of which will have good traction. That naturally increases the capabilities of the car, and you won't have difficulties overcoming the diagonal obstacle when moving uphill. The magic of rear axle lock has been illustrated with Nissan Navara white and blue Toyota Hilux and Ford F-150. Without activating the rear lock, the cars helplessly skidded and with it, they confidently continued to move. The third type is all wheel drive with traction control system. As in the first case, there are no forced locks, but there is electronics that help by using the brake system. It helps to transfer more torque to the loaded wheels, both on the rear axle and on the front axle. The system breaks the skidding wheel by creating more drag, which transfers more torque to the loaded wheel. And the more gas the driver gives, the more torque is transferred. This was clearly visible on Isuzu's D-Max's attempts earlier. The fourth type of all-wheel drive is what I call hybrid, a combination of traction control with forced rear axle lock. This means that it combines all the best that is in the three previous types of all-wheel drive. On light off-road terrain, you'd be satisfied with electronics, and if you need to drive at a more difficult area, you can activate the rear inter-axle lock, and in tandem with an imitation of differential lock on the front axle. This hybrid four-wheel drive becomes the most effective of those presented in this video.
Volkswagen Amarok with a 3-liter turbo diesel engine is equipped with such locks and has this type of all-wheel drive system. And now, the most important question. Who's the best? My rating is specifically based on performance of all-wheel drive systems since the consumer qualities of cars are a topic for a separate conversation. First place, Amarok, because he has everything that all the other cars have, but they do not have everything that Amarok has. It's about the traction control system and the forced rear differential lock. Second place, Isuzu D-Max, because the average driver who is not familiar with off-road equipment will be able to drive without any special knowledge due to the car's traction control system. Whereas, when driving Toyota Hilux, the average driver would get stuck. I'm talking about situations when the D-Max in standard mode was able to drive where the Hilux was powerless without activating the rear lock. By the way, 2021 D-Max model has perceived a rear lock axle feature. I wonder what its performance is going to be in comparison with classmates. We will definitely find out in the future. Third place, Toyota Hilux with rear axle lock, Ford F-150 and Navara. Since these cars do not have a fundamental difference in the operation of their all-wheel drive systems. Grey Hilux and Ford Ranger are a good example of what you might encounter when choosing a car without rear axle lock, especially when both of these cars have factory versions with rear locks. It makes sense to add a little bit more and get one with a rear lock. I'm not going to say anything about Ford Raptor, because this car generally requires a more detailed study. Since within the framework of this test, I still do not understand where this car's limit is. Therefore, we will definitely see this car in future videos. That's all for today. Now, write in comments who in your opinion should take the first, second and third place. My name is Dias and see you in the next videos.